I welcome Tom and Eula to this little interview that I'm doing. Thank you for giving me the time. Uh, basically, I have a few questions for you, and I'd like you to answer it, how you would answer them according to your as working as the, as part of the care ministry team. Yep. So the first question I have is, uh, what new things or new ways that you're active as the care ministry? So um, we've started this uh, getting connected or keeping connected strategy with members of the church. Uh, several of us took pages from the directory and uh, have been calling people just to see how they are and how they're doing. And it's been fascinating to see how well these calls are being received. Um, in, I, I've, I think I would say I got maybe 30% um, of just voicemails and I would just leave uh, voicemails about who I am and why I was calling. And some people are calling me back uh, just to Good. confirm that they got my call and how much they appreciated that. So that's what we are doing right now. And I would add that uh, Laura took uh, one of the sections of the directory and has been having some pretty fascinating conversations that were very worthwhile. And I've been picking up a number of messages where people have called back that she left messages for. And they're just universally appreciative of uh, that kind of contact. Okay. Um, I, I'd also, you started the card ministry to the right. different facilities. And we've uh, received a uh, few calls here at the church, uh, that said that people are saying thank you for sending the cards. Oh, good. Folks good. at Brookdale and at Atria have yeah. called to say thank you for doing that. Thank you yeah. for thinking of the folks that you know that normally aren't able to get. Okay, we lost you a lot. Okay, hopefully she can connect back in. Okay. Well, there are um, seventy or seventy-two residents, I think, at Brookdale and 170 at Atria, and we received uh, enough cards um, to uh, cover all of that plus a little more. And so we're gonna keep that going. Okay. And then what would you say the frustration has been? Certainly one frustration that's come out of the calling is the realization that uh, we don't have up-to-date phone numbers uh, for everybody in our church directory. Okay. And so one of the benefits coming out of this is we're getting some updates, but there are people that we have not been able to reach. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, my observation is oftentimes people think we just know. So exactly. Yeah. That they've moved and they don't give us a new number. Yeah. So. Okay. And kind of related to that is uh, a reinforcement of an observation I've had before. And that is that uh, when people have needs themselves or they're aware of other needs, they somehow think we're automatically knowing all of that when we really aren't. And so uh, this, this phoning has revealed some needs that we were not otherwise aware of. Okay. And it's a, just a reminder that, um, uh, if people in the congregation are in, in needing some kind of pastoral care or care ministry care themselves, or if they're aware of other people, including people who are not necessarily members of the church, but are a part of our community, uh, that we want to hear about that. And we'd rather hear many times than have people assume that somebody else is telling us. Okay. Yeah. Good, good observation, Tom. And then what would you say are, is the thing that that after all of this is over, um, something that, you know, the things that you would like to see continue? I believe the idea of uh, regularly uh, calling, not necessarily everybody in the directory as we're trying to do right now with dividing the whole thing up, but uh, getting more people involved in just calling uh, those who, uh, for whatever reason, aren't able to be in worship regularly or we think might have some uh, issues that uh, we could be praying about or uh, giving some physical help or whatever it might be. But uh, just 
more systematically and regularly staying in uh, phone contact with the whole congregation. And uh, one of the things that uh, it's not new knowledge necessarily, but uh, it's really reinforced for me the awareness that a phone call in many, many ways is much more powerful and effective than email. Okay. Yeah. Yula, we've moved to the question of yeah. what, what things we were going to keep post the coronavirus uh, pandemic. What are some of the things you'd like to see us keep um, that has come out of, uh. out of this? Tom was talking about maintaining the, the phone contacts with everyone and things like that. Yeah, I would I would suggest that as well, just based on um, the reception that we've got. I think people feel very cared for and connected. So I would absolutely think that's something that we can do. Uh, perhaps um, think more about the logistics of doing that, whether we want to do that every month or every week. And so the team will have to... Um, to decide how much and how frequently we can do that. But I definitely see us continuing to do that. Okay. One of the other things that uh, is not necessarily directly related to care ministry, but uh, could be, is that uh, Laura and I have been having a good time, uh, first of all, hosting the uh, Lent study on Zoom. And, uh, this Sunday, we're launching another five-week study on Zoom and have brought some people in that have not been a part of groups before. And I'm thinking that mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. after all of this is over, that we could uh, keep that kind of ministry going, yeah. particularly for some of our people who uh, are not able to get out to church but still have the uh, technological capability of getting on to Zoom, and we could uh, keep connecting that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm hearing that with children's ministry and with youth, that there are some things that we can continue to do with the technology uh -huh. that we weren't doing before. Yeah, that right. because of the because of the situation we're in, it made it it, it kind of moved it forward to where we're going to be able to do those things. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And, and kind of related to that, it would be helpful to have uh, some of our tech people uh, or tech savvy people, particularly maybe our youth, uh, connect with some of the seniors who have the capability computer wise, but they need, just need help knowing how to set up Zoom, for example. Right, right. Right, right. And, and I wonder, Pastor Scott, if, um, if, if, if that is something that can be offered to the whole congregation, if they needed some remedial technical training on how to join Zoom, that can be done formally so that perhaps uh, between services, people can be, invite, can be invited to go into the training room and shown just, um, just in time training for, for joining me meetings on Zoom. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. No, okay. All right, well, I thank you both for your time and uh, thank you for helping us uh, make people aware of what we've got going on during the pandemic and keep on doing the good work that you're doing. Thank you for doing this. Well, well right. thank you very much. Yeah, I'm sorry I got dropped off at some point. I'm not sure. So I had to move to a different room and I think it's it, the, the, the reception is better here. Okay. All right, thanks. All right. Thanks. Okay.